Hey guys, welcome to Southern Comfort. Well, it's just about sweet potato time. I did a video on how to grow sweet potato slips. Those were Georgia Jets, and these are the sweet potatoes uh, plants now. They're looking absolutely beautiful. They do have some bug pressure. I'm not worried about that because I'm not eating the leaves. Of course, you could eat the leaves. Um, but these are the potatoes that I dug up about three days ago. So I'm going to go and see if these potatoes are ready. I don't really want them to get any bigger than this. I mean, this is really bacon size, nice size, a manageable size. And so I'm going to dig down in there and see what's going on into the ground. It's hot and humid here. It was 95 uh, degrees today. That's not counting the heat index. And you can just stand outside and just start sweating. That's how hot it is. But sweet potatoes plants love the heat so we're going to dig down in there and see what we can find and see if it's time to get these potatoes up and get them to a place that they can cure this is what i usually use to get up my potatoes to help me get them up and of course gloves now down here i can basically tell where my rose was at so that's not going to be too bad starting off that's where you want to start at look and see where you can start digging at find where you started planting those plants and if you can find that plant pull those uh, vines back then you'll know where to start digging so as i look down here i can see a little mound right there and i believe i'm correct there might be one there might be one there there is one there and there's one there and then this right here is just where I, I threw in some watermelons. And that's a honeydew down there. I need to get out here and check the watermelons. So we've been harvesting a little bit of watermelon. So that's where I'm going to start at. These are black eyed peas, which I'm letting them go to seed. So I know I got an opening right here. And then I'm going to start pulling back right there. Now with the potatoes I just showed you, I believe I dug up one here and one onto the next row. So what I'm going to do is, because you know you're dealing with vines, I'm going to see if I can find where, see if I can find where uh, the crown of the plant is, which is kind of hard to do. A lot of people, here it is, a lot of people will take and mow down these plants at this point in time i need to see i need to see if uh it's time to dig them up so what i like to do hopefully you can see me what i like to do is i like to dig down in here and that's what i did the other day i just dug down and to see if i can run into any potatoes the sand ants are really starting to kick with all this heat and uh so this soil is broken up a little bit, so this is definitely where I got that other potato from. And I see a potato. To take and see if the potatoes are ready, you want to dig down in there and see how big they are before you start digging. Okay, this one. This one is this size, so it's not, it's not, it's not big enough yet. Maybe I just looked up the first one I grabbed was big, and so what I need to do, come on the other side, see if I can dig down. This dirt's starting to get hard with all this heat. I, I did see another small one right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that up and go down a little bit. Now last year, my sweet potatoes were literally, some of them were like a foot deep into the ground. They're trying to get to that water. We went through a drought and they was, and I, I had to dig down to a foot, um, eight inches to a foot to get all my potatoes. It was a job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down a little bit further down here, look at another plant, dig down, and it's time to get these plants watered. 
ground is starting to dry out, which is going to make these roots go even further down. And they're deep. That's why the fork actually helps out. When you, you go, they start going deep, it helps you to get them out. Now, if you was, uh, you know, getting these potatoes up, you just pull the vine, you find your crown down here. I wouldn't be this close. You might still have a potato, but I'm trying to get this one. Okay. So, the potato's this big. And, uh, it's not bad. It's not a bad but a sweet potato. I'm looking to see. Looks like maybe the ants are starting to get to them. Can't see with the dirt, but I did see a bite. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is take and go down here. Try to, you know, pull one vine out. Let's pull a little bit out. You know, take a, take where the crown's at. Try to pull it up. Try to dig down there and see if it's uh, time to harvest these potatoes. So it's not bad, you know, trying to, these are the two potatoes, and surely there's a lot more. There's always a lot more. They're just going deeper. So uh, if I don't dig them all up, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and water them. But the thing of it is, we've had so much rain, and we got more rain coming. And I always look at the skin to see how the skin is looking, because I don't want them to rot. And it kind of looks like, it kind of looks like they could be getting too much moisture. So, with that being said, then what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to water them. We got a, um, possibly some rain tomorrow, and definitely some, a lot of other times of rain coming up, and I don't want my potatoes to rot. So, let me dig down there and see what's going on. Okay, so, uh, hot out here. So, um, I dug up two plants, lots of vines. If you got pigs or cows, they will love those. So I'm looking at these potatoes, even though three days ago I dug up uh, only two potatoes and it was nice size. Um, I want to see if that was the size I'm looking for. If all these potatoes was that size or, you know, about that size or, you know, heading it that way. Because these, these are just nice sized potatoes. But uh, what I'm looking for is to see if they're getting too much water because we've had lots of downpours of rain. Another thing I'm looking for is to see if the ants are getting into them. So I went and washed two of these, and one of the things I noticed is that uh, a possibility that it is starting to get too much water. Now, when you get a lot of, oh, they get a lot of water suddenly, say it's hot, or they're, they're even killed, and suddenly they get all this water, what happens is, is it starts making them deformed because it gets all that moisture, it gets all that water, and it creates them to grow real fast, and it creates them to be deformed. Now, are they edible? Yes, they're edible. But this is what, I, what I'm looking for, to see if they're getting too much water, see if the insects are getting into them. Now, on this one right here, it looks like they have been getting into them. Now, the ones I got the other day are absolutely beautiful. They they look they look wonderful, so um, but you know things can change overnight. That right there does look like it might be an insect getting into it, and that's what I'm. That's why you want to dig. That's why I'm digging right now. See what's going on with these potatoes. If they're this size, I would definitely go ahead and the majority of them go ahead and start digging them up because this time of the year it's end of July. The ants will start roaming, and uh, they'll they'll get into them and tear them up and, and ruin your potatoes. See how so much moisture, water, suddenly comes in and it creates it to grow real fast, creates it to make an ugly face. The thing of it is, before you harvest your potatoes, you want to dig down and see how these potatoes are looking. Now, these potatoes are here. I would say, if we're looking at them, I would definitely give them uh, about two more weeks. But what I'm going to be doing is washing these up. Are these edible? Yes, these, these are edible. But what I'm going to be doing is washing these up and take a look at the skin. I'm concerned about, I didn't see any ants, but I'm concerned about ants or some kind of critter getting in there and start munching on them and ruining my potatoes. That's what we have to look after. So being this size right here, they'll be great for making sweet potato fries. They're not, it's not a waste of digging these up. 
it just uh, it's actually a value because now I know I need to at least give these potatoes hopefully another week or two weeks I would like to give them another two weeks but um, with looking at the skin right here I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to handle all the rain that we're getting in I got gnat in my eye so that's what you want to do sweet potato slips you grow them you plant them in the garden you grow your own so you got no money tied up into it if you lost all of your harvest then you have nothing tied up into it then you will save uh, some of the potatoes for the next season and then try to do another harvest again do another planting growing some more slips so watch the video I made um, growing sweet potato slips it's really as easy it really is simple these are Georgia Jets and I have not spent any money this year buying slips from a company I made up my mind I'm gonna do this you can push me down that's not gonna be funny that is not gonna be funny that is not gonna be funny <laughs> so um, but now I know um, you know what to do now what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna wait uh, I'll probably wait about another about three or four days and then I'm gonna take and go and dig down because you see it might this might just be here down there it might be something different so I'm gonna wait about another three days I'm gonna go down there I'm gonna dig up another plant lots of vines and see how those potatoes are doing then give it another couple of days if those are need to be stayed in the ground a little bit longer give it more a couple more days three days because of the heat the weather the insects um, you know it's just a wise thing to do to make sure that you don't lose your harvest at such a time as this that's a lot that's a lot of food right there that is a, really that is that that is a lot and you know what if you look at all that if these potatoes are a little bit bigger off the two plants that is a lot of potatoes harvesting uh, sweet potatoes here uh, we've been over here and three days ago and we got uh, some nice sized ones we also found some smaller ones so I waited three days and but we got rain coming in and when I look at the 10-day forecast there's a good possibility of rain just about every single day we had a downpour yesterday and last night the ground is still wet so I'm going to go up under there and check those potatoes but just like regular potatoes sometimes you got to go ahead and harvest them to keep them from uh, blistering keep them from all the rain rotting in them and so now I need to check these potatoes and see how well they're doing they've been in the ground for 113 days they were planted in April we're at the end of July and so I'm calculating around about 113 days and so usually our sweet potatoes will be in the ground about 120 29 depends on the size of the potatoes what they're doing but we're going to go ahead and try to dig some of these up and see how well they are doing and see if we need to let them sit there for a little bit or see if the potatoes are starting to rot this is what i um, examined here or found out is that some of these are starting to put out roots um they're not the size i wanted they're not the size of last year but when they start putting out roots that one i can see roots um and i'm not sure what else is going on with that but because it's got so much dirt on it but when you start seeing roots coming out on the plants i mean not on the plants onto the potatoes they're fixing to make sweet potato slips and by saying that they need to get out of the ground we've had a lot of rain um I'm surprised these potatoes are not any bigger than what they are but nevertheless I'm thankful and they might be the perfect size because I find out that my smaller potatoes are sweeter than my big potatoes and they're easier to cut up this one I need to wash off and to see see the potatoes are still wet that's that's the thing they're, they're wet I would I hate to have to dig these potatoes up this wet um, we got 50 some percent rain coming in tomorrow the clouds are clouding up now but uh i'm just going to dig a little bit more and what i'm gonna have to do is brush some of this um wet dirt off of here gently it's got the skins there and just lay it out single layer and just lay them out 
just lay them out and uh, see if I can get them to dry some. I won't get all these potatoes up. I'm just going to dig some up and maybe, maybe it's just in that area. But I did notice a lot of roots into the ground. And I've never seen that before. There's, there's a lot of little roots. Uh, I know we got the vines and all that, but I've just never seen so many roots. So maybe this year is, you know, the weather's different. Maybe, um, you know, could be anything. Maybe they're just, you know, they're just trying to grow, you know, trying to grow more potatoes. Now I don't need them. I don't need sweet potato slips. I need sweet potatoes. Um, and it's hot and humid out here too. Very hot. Um, what I'm going to continue doing is uh, pulling those vines out and uh, see what my harvest is. The plants look beautiful. Yes, they have some insect pressures, um, but that's not going to hurt the potatoes. Uh, you know, we had Japanese beetles. That, I'm not sure what it was. But I'm not going to be eating leaves anyhow. And uh, thank God I didn't have... The deer's in here this year because I have the deer fencing, so that took a whole lot of stress off. So I don't mind seeing a little bit of insect pressure. To save my energy, I'm going to take a machete and cut the vines because these potatoes got to get out of here. The ground is just too wet. It's like 95 today, and the ground is still soaking wet and with more rain. So, size so pulling on these vines. Hugging my head off because it's hot out here. I'm just going to cut them down. Now I didn't get as many this time. But I'm not pulling my head off. And I'm trying to make my workload easy, work smarter, not harder. Getting the vines out, I can now see where the crown of each plant is at. It didn't take very long to start getting these vines out. It took longer to pull onto them. So now I know exactly where to dig. How much Vines I've already gotten out already. It's a big pile of them. Might not look like that on TV, but it is a big, big pile of them. So I decided, you know, it's kind of sun's fixing to go down. Not sure how much more daylight we got here, but um, and I decided, you know, since I know where my rows are at, I can see the crowns. Maybe I'll just go ahead and get these vines out. I won't get all these potatoes out today. The There's no way. I won't get them out today, the but at least it will give a chance for the soil to get some air to it. Well, I guess I've dug about maybe 30 feet. Take a machete. It makes it a lot easier. Just throw some of the blind um, vines over there. Uh, stop right there, and I uh, didn't get to the end. But potatoes definitely are wet, but that's a pretty good harvest so far. I mean, that's, that really is a good harvest because I, I'm guessing probably about 30 feet. The potatoes are definitely ready to harvest. Didn't notice some insect um, problems there in a couple of them or so. Um, it's hard to really look at these potatoes when they're they're wet um they're not like soaking wet but the dirt um the, the dirt doesn't look bad but you've got to consider these potatoes are crammed into like a pocket they're all crammed up together uh smothering each other pretty much and so they're not getting much uh air getting to them but uh that's not bad that's almost a, a half a wagon load and say 30 feet but I'm looking at a distance, and I see clouds back there. Because these potatoes have got to get out of here. Uh, the, I notice that some of them are blistering from too much water. Now, once these 
to dry out some. They won't look so bad, but these are not, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty good sized potatoes. Um, now, I know at the grocery store, they have them looking perfect. I've been out in the field picking up potatoes, and they only, they only harvest the ones on the truck. They got to be perfect. They got to be hand size, and they got to, they got to look perfect, perfect. They can't have any deformities or crazy shapes or trying to find one here. You know, not not too big. They'll leave them out in the field, and I pick pick up plenty of those up. Nothing wrong with them, but they just have them looking perfect for the grocery store. So when you harvest your own potatoes, they're not going to look perfect. Some of them going to be small. Some of them going to look uh, deformed. You know what? But they all go down the same. Oh no. Well, at least I thought I was because I see a dark cloud way back there now. Way back there behind those trees. Even if they, they call for no rain, I look at the clouds and say, well, storm's coming. So it's the second day. I took and cut the vines down yesterday, but I just heard thunder. And I was abating on because we had a lot of rain last night, whether to uh, leave these potatoes in the ground, but they're starting to blister. I did see a little bit of um, ants, you know, which will eat the potatoes. And uh, so these are looking a pretty good size. Yeah, I just heard thunder and was trying to get down that row. I remembered last night that half of this row was planted and then later on the rest of it was planted and then this row. Um, the weather slowed the potatoes down because it was cooler. But now what I'm going to do, because I heard that thunder, is go ahead and get these potatoes up. Now the reason I decided to go ahead and dig them and not leave them in the ground is for the fact that they're wet and they're starting to blister which means their skin color is starting to change and uh the thing of it is is when they're like this this dirt's on them it's hard to dry i was hoping the sun will come out and dry some of this dirt on the potatoes Okay, last row is finished. And I'm glad because we got some rains coming in this afternoon, supposedly. And all the potatoes are up, sun is shining, get a chance to die, die, dry some of those potatoes off. On this end, they were a little bit smaller. This soil down here is different, it does stay drier. But looking at the potatoes, they're getting little roots onto them. And so we don't want to be growing more sweet potatoes. We want our potatoes. Nice size ones. No complaints. The smallest ones can be used with stir fry. If you haven't seen my video on how to grow sweet potato slips, check it out. Very simple, very easy. These are... Uh, are homegrown slips, none was store bought. And so this is the harvest I have gotten for just saving some sweet potatoes. 
from last year that's gotten used to my environment. So you can really say they are homegrown. And you know, I'm glad they're not super, super big, but these are nice sized potatoes. So the sweet potatoes are all harvest, and I'm so thankful. And I think we pretty much got a good, very good harvest. So let's take a look at the last row of sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes are starchy root vegetables that are rich in fiber and vitamins and minerals. They store for a good long time. Just put them in a cool, dark place. And you see at this end, that was the end of the row. The potatoes are small, but once again, they had roots that were starting onto them. Uh, all over them actually and uh, so it, it was definitely time for them to come out come out and uh, come up <laughs> so I am so glad to get these sweet potatoes out of the garden I don't have to worry about them with the rain that is a humongous sweet potato humongous but I like the, I like the smaller sizes now the, the ones at the bottom or more of the size I like just a good bacon size but I really like the smaller ones also um, because the fact of it is is that they're easy you know they're easy to cut up and they're, they're easy to manage so let's go take a look at where I'm putting these sweet potatoes I got the rest of them already into the house now this is actually just a temporary place so later on I will definitely put them into a a cool dark room um, which is usually what I do but I want you to look at the setup since these potatoes the ground was wet we had lots of rain the potatoes was wet of course these on top now dried out I did leave them up under the shade tree here for a little bit so today was a lot better day of getting potatoes out of the ground than yesterday but I want you to look at the setup that I got that's going to work make sure that these sweet potatoes get plenty of air they're into a, a good location, they're into a cooler location than outside or into a, just a building. But this has worked in the past. I have no problem saving sweet potatoes. This gives me the opportunity to let them cure properly, not rot. I only found one rotten potato into the garden. That told me, yep, it was a right call to go ahead and get these potatoes out because you do not want the, your potatoes to rot. So let's go take a look at my little setup. So here are the potatoes. And the ones that's outside have not gotten in here yet. So by the time I bring those in, that'll be going up to there. And then I have one ready there. These are vegetable carts. Um, they're crates, uh, cart crates. But um, this right here, it folds out, it collapses, so you can put easy storage. These right here, um, they do not fold, but they work great. I've got them on just a single layer, so you can get good air from the bottom and at the top. Now, right now, I'm looking at easy potatoes, and they look like they're drying pretty good. Um, last year, I put them onto a plastic uh, type, like a dog, uh, a dog tray like the one that goes in the bottom of a dog kennel, uh, the plastic one. And the potatoes also last year I had to dig up because we always hit it to right when the rains are coming. You just don't want your potatoes to rot. So sometimes you just need to go ahead and get them out of the ground. And I noticed that because of the dirt on the bottom of them, then with that plastic uh, dog tray, they did not dry on the bottom because they were flat. This time I've got, this is what I use to put my potatoes into, my regular potatoes. And I've used this before to put sweet potatoes in. But I went back to this way so I don't have to worry about them. Right now they're already drying out because they're getting air from the bottom. They're getting air from the top all the way around. Um, I have a blanket back here. Uh, right now in the afternoon the sun comes through the window. This is basically just a temporary place until I get them to the location that I actually want them at because um, I have a cool dark room but right now I'm doing some things in there moving things around so they're going to have to go here temporarily and what I do is whether into um, a, a dark cool room I usually put it near the air conditioned vent 
Now, either which way, I always have it covered up. I keep as much light out. That room back there, the door stays shut. But right now, when I put my vegetables in here, then I always cover them up. I'll take a blanket. Uh, I'll take cardboard. Um, I have big, big pieces of cardboard. And I block out all the light as much as possible. So this is working. These are, uh, is a type of cart. This is a type of like an egg carton type material um, that I use for my tomatoes. I use these for my potatoes. Um, it works very good. It's paper so that if there was rottenness, whether it's tomato, potato, then this carton here would absorb the moisture and not touch the other vegetables and keep it from rotten. Um, these was my first uh, potatoes I dug up. Let me know that, hey, I need to go ahead and get these out of the ground. Um, so, very proud of my potatoes. But this is my little setup. I got these off of Facebook marketing for the blue ones for $2 a piece. They're vegetable uh, cart containers, trays, whatever you want to call them. And these black ones here, I have more out there in another area, but they were free. And see, they collapse, so it's an easy storage. Well, guys, just want to show you my setup here. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, yeah, check out that video, How to Grow Sweet, sweet Potato. Check out that video, How to Grow Sweet Potato Slips. Um, I'm super happy that 100% I didn't buy any slips. All these potatoes uh, I've been growing for years. So they are alkaline, they're alkaline, what a word. They are, they have grown to my environment around here. So they've gotten used to my area. So I love my little setup here. Um, it works really great. That would be even more perfect when it's out of this room and into a cool, dark place. Now, these potatoes I grow year after year and I save the potatoes and it works great. So they're used to my area, my environment around here. They have adjusted, the potatoes have adjusted to my area. And uh, so these potatoes here um, was 113 days. But then I realized later that uh, half of those was like um, 100 days because they got planted later on, like two, or three weeks later, which is my, was my plan so I don't have to dig them all up at one time. But I noticed that the last row was big, bigger, and some of them were bigger, or just as big as the other rows. So they all grew about the same um, time and the size. And so that worked out really great. I was really surprised about that. But I believe that has a lot to do with, because there are potatoes that I have raised up, been having for years, and every year I save some of my potatoes and um, that seems to work really great around here. So my cost into my potatoes is zero. Zero cost for these sweet potato slips. These, um, zero cost for these uh, potatoes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Now I'm gonna go out there and get the rest of the potatoes and get them in here and I'll be set it takes two weeks for them to cure. Now, I have taken potatoes right out of the garden and cooked them, and they were sweet. They were they were great. They usually say to wait two weeks so that the potatoes will, you know, the starch will start turning a sweeter or sweet. But uh, I never had a problem because these potatoes uh, I have raised up for years, and every year I save some of my potatoes, and then the next year I have potatoes so I can... Um, produce sweet potato slips. So I'm really happy that this year that I just made up my mind. I'm not buying from a company. Um, I'm just going to rely on my slips, whatever they produce. And they did produce really great. So watch that video, how to, um, how to have sweet potato slips, how to grow sweet potato slips. I think it's the name of the video. It's into my playlist. But thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you all my subscribers. You're awesome. And give me a thumbs up on all this hard work here of getting the sweet potato slips, saving my potatoes, getting them out of the garden. And now we are here. And I just, well, hopefully there's some tips into this video 
whether it's just growing sweet potato slips or these, contain these containers here or whatever, something that you can use or pass on to somebody else. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on to the next video.